USS South Carolina was the first American dreadnought-style battleship, and would have some revolutionary features that would make the rest of the United States Navy's force of battleships obsolete. Now, the Americans had the idea independently from the British for a uniform main battery of guns. However, the designers were hamstrung by Congress, which is a common theme for most U.S. warships, as Congress thinks they know how to design a warship better than actual designers. Anyway, the ship would see a shift in the United States Navy from the old ways of pre-dreadnoughts to this newer way, and it would eventually lead all the way up to the Iowa class of fast battleships. So in other words, this ship marks a very important point in naval development for the United States. South Carolina would be one of two in this class, the other being USS Michigan. They'd both have a displacement of around 16,000 tons standard displacement, and a full load of 17,000 tons. South Carolina would be powered by 12 water tube boilers that produce 16,500 indicated horsepower. This would give the ship a top speed of 18.5 knots. Moving on to her armament, she would have 8 12-inch guns or 305mm guns and super-firing turrets, which for the time was a revolution in design, because that gave the ship the ability to bring its entire main battery to bear on either the port or starboard side. Her secondary battery would consist of 22 3-inch or 76mm guns, along with a tertiary battery of 2 3-pounder or 47mm guns, also a quaternary battery of 8 1-pound or 37mm guns, and finally two submerged torpedo tubes. Her armor would consist of 12 to 8 inches or 305 to 203 millimeters on the belt. The decks would be from 2.5 to 1 inches or 64 to 25 millimeters thick. The turrets would have 12 inches on the face or 305 millimeters. The sides would be 8 inches or 203 millimeters. Finally, the roof would be 2.5 inches or 64 millimeters. She would be laid down on the 18th of December 1906, launched on July the 11th, 1908, and finally commissioned to the United States Navy on March 1st, 1910. South Carolina would spend much of her career in the Atlantic Fleet, where she would patrol the United States coast and the Caribbean. In 1910, however, she would travel with the 2nd Battleship Division to Europe, where she would spend her time in France doing a showing in the flag type mission, and then head back to the U.S. for naval exercises. And then, by 1911, she would be back in Europe to participate in another showing of the flag-type mission, this time in the Nordic countries in Russia, along with visiting Germany. She would continue to do naval exercises and patrolling the United States Atlantic coast through 1911 and 1912, but by 1913, she would start to see some semblance of action. As she was patrolling the Caribbean and participating in naval exercises that consisted of training naval academy personnel, she also patrolled the Mexican coast around Tampico and Veracruz, as the Mexican Civil War was going on at the time, and the Americans had a lot of interest and assets within the country. However, after some time, she would have to go back to the U.S. Naval Base at Norfolk for an overhaul that lasted from September of 1913 to January of 1914. Later in January, she'd be sent out to help secure American assets in the Haitian port city of Port-au-Prince, in which she sent a contingent of Marines to go assist. Her next big mission was to assist in the American occupation of the Mexican port city of Veracruz, after an incident between American sailors and Mexican soldiers. South Carolina would be sent for an overhaul in October of 1914 in Philadelphia, where it would last until February of 1915. Whereafter, until the United States joined World War I, she followed the same pattern of maneuvers, in which she would have training exercises off Cuba in the first quarter of the year, and then have maneuvers in Newport, and periodic maintenance in Philadelphia at the end of the year. When the United States joined World War I, South Carolina, along with the pre-dreadnoughts in the United States fleet, they continued to patrol the Atlantic coast, where they essentially would watch for German U-boats. Then in September of 1918, herself and the pre-dreadnoughts Kansas and New Hampshire were sent out to protect a troop convoy, and halfway through the month, in the mid-Atlantic, they turned around and left the convoy and headed back to the United States. However, on the 17th, South Carolina lost her starboard propeller, which forced her to reduce speed to around 11 knots. Then on the 20th, her portside engine stopped, which caused the ship to go under auxiliary throttle. She would head to Philadelphia for repairs and return to service shortly after, where she would participate in gunnery exercises until the Germans signed an armistice in November of 1918. Then she would spend a while carrying American personnel back from Europe in 1919. Her post-war career would see her go through the Panama Canal and visit port cities on the west coast of the United States in 1920, and then headed back to the Atlantic in the spring of 1921, where she would make trips from the United States Atlantic coast to European nations. 
However, as the great powers met for the Washington Naval Conference, it became clear that South Carolina and her sister ship were going to be scrapped under the terms of the Naval Treaty. She was listed as surplus to requirements, and after the signing of the treaty in February of 1922, she was decommissioned on the 15th of December and then sold for scrap in 1924. The USS South Carolina, in comparison to later ships, does not really seem to be all that much, but if you look down the line of future U.S. capital ship construction, you can see her legacy throughout all of it, making her something truly special for the United States Navy.